Hey there, it's the English Picker here. Uh, just wanted to do another video of some car boot sale finds. It's the Easter bank holiday weekend and I'm going to be coming out with a whole series of little mini hauls because these are still the remnants of Saturday's car boot finds. Uh, I've been buying like crazy. It's now Sunday that I'm recording this on the Easter bank holiday. I'm going out tomorrow as well so I'll probably have some more stuff then. So. Uh, I had a bit of a bizarre thing happen today at the car boot sale. Um, I was wandering around and um, buying bits and pieces, but I just bought a PlayStation. And I was walking by with this PlayStation under my arm, and uh, this bloke went, Tom. So I looked around, expecting to sort of half recognise a person and whatnot. Didn't recognise him at all. So I went to him and I am sorry, do, you know, do I know you kind of thing. And the guy goes, oh, I've, um, I've watched your videos. Actually, if you're watching, Martin, hi, I hope the car boot sale went well. Anyway, I've got chatting to this guy, Martin, and it turns out that he watches my videos, he watches uh, Nick Hill's videos, and he also watches Joe's videos, uh, which is quite bizarre, really, um, to be sort of recognised at the car boot and kind of... I don't know, it just felt a bit weird, so it was very peculiar in a sense. It, it gave me a nice positive feeling, um, I mean, he said that he, you know, he, he just likes watching videos like that, he, he sells odd bits on eBay, and he got a whole selection of stuff there, so um, yeah, just thought I'd mention that. Uh, the other weird thing is, today when I was wandering around, I took, you know, I normally take a decent amount of money with me, uh, lots of £5 and loads of change. But today, I just ran out of money. For some reason, like, I hadn't brought as much as normal. It was quite an unnerving feeling. It was weird because I'm so used to being prepared for these things. When I wasn't, I was kind of a bit, oh, this is, a, this is, uh, and I've got to, you know, I had to make sure that I had enough left to get my bacon sandwich at the end. So, yeah, it was a bit of a weird one, but in hindsight, actually, it was probably a good thing because I'd already made two trips to the car with stuff, so, yeah, I'm going to be on that programme called Hoarders soon. So, anyway, I'll get into what I bought. This was yesterday on the Saturday. Uh, I came across this guy that he... I think he was a bit of an antiques dealer because he said, oh, I've come here to sell some of the... How do you phrase it? Some of the stuff... He kind of implied that some of the stuff that's harder to sell, or I've some of the stuff I've had for a while, and it sounded like he was perhaps a dealer, but anything on his table was 50p, so I just picked and choose through it. Um, and this is all stuff for my antiques booth. For those guys who, and girls who don't know, I've got an antiques booth at an antique centre. Uh, it costs me £100 a month, and they take a 20% commission on all sales. And it's good for stuff which isn't suitable for eBay and or stuff which you can't sell on eBay and also fragile items, which is what I've picked up here. So I'll show you the first thing I got was this, um, so I suppose you call it depression glass uh, bowl. It's got some scuffs on the inside, but it's nothing major. No chips or anything like that, but really nice piece. Uh, 50p, I'll probably ask probably 8 quid for that, 5, 8 quid. Not too bad, maybe a bit more, not sure. Um, then there's this one, this one's kind of, uh, again, depression glass. It's got sort of like a, a pinkish cranberry colour. Uh, these are very sort of art deco lines, so it's probably 1930s, 1920s. There is some chipping to the feet, but the none around the rim, so little chips on the corners of the feet I, I can get away with. Uh, this, uh, probably again, same price, probably five to ten quid. Uh, I'll chance my arm and I can always reduce it. Um, I picked up this, which is a really nice art pottery jug. It's got a maker's mark, which I think is an A and a B, just there. Um, but I didn't notice that there's a chip on the rim, so I don't know. I'll probably end up keeping that for myself. Probably put like pens in it on my desk. It's quite a nice piece, but that chip means I, maybe I could sell it for a fiver, but. I don't like to, I like to keep quality in there because it's all about perception that if uh, you've got some chip pieces people kind of think it's more like a jumble sale so um, 
<clears throat> yeah, I like to try and keep it good quality stock. Uh, I got this piece because it's a bit unusual. Uh, it's fairly modern and it's made out of an old bottle, I think. I don't know how they've done it, but it's got some wax in, so I'm assuming you can make a candlestick out of it. Just a bit quirky, really. It's not really old, but quirky stuff sells in the antiques booth. I'd just about get away with this time. They don't really like anything too modern, but I'll just about get away with this because it is a created product, so they allow you to sell stuff that you or someone you know's made. So I get away with selling that, and I'll get a fiver for that. This this one it needs a bit of cleaning because it's got sort of some kind of residue inside. But this is a really lovely again I think depression glass bowl, uh, blue with these lovely swirling bits in. Really nice piece. Quality made. Um, I'll probably 10 to 15 on that. Maybe I might push the boat out because it, it will be something that's potentially popular. Nice size as well for a centrepiece on the table. Uh, I've done quite well with glass in that sense, but something like that would be a tough sell on eBay because of um, posting it. Uh, next thing I got here was it's, it's, it's kind of horrible, but people like it. It's this kind of aquamarine depression glass uh, dish a bit of quality as well because the base has been ground so it's a nice thing no chips or anything not my cup of tea but it'll be somebody's cup of tea and for 50p I wasn't going to leave it there um, that down there and then the last thing I got which oh no there's two more things there's this this is a a bit of crazing going on with the glaze there, the little cracks. Uh, but that's normal, this little vase. But I think the spirals are actually in the clay, because you can see in the base there. It's got some kind of maker's mark. I don't really know on that, but I think I'm going to keep that one, just because it's pretty cool. Uh, it's not very big, but if I was to sell it, I'd probably get a fiver for that. And then um, the last thing i got, which is what I'm keeping for myself, which is, I just like the look of it. I think it's probably 1970, something like that, and it's this sort of uh, red with a, 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 a non-translucent white glass inside. Sorry, my terminologies are not great. Uh, it kind of looks like an ashtray, but um, pin dish, something like that. Just really nice look to it, so I think I'm going to keep that one. Uh, but if I was to sell it, I'd probably go high on it, something like 10 quid. So that's that with the glass. Uh, I did pick up some other glass, but I can't show you one of them because it's already been claimed. Um, but I got two uh, bottles like this. There's one that's similar but was about that big. And that's the one that's been claimed. Um, and they were... She wouldn't go down on them. They were £2 each. Uh, but this one's, the, in my opinion, the cooler one. And this, this should sell in the antiques booth because it's got the not to be taken on there uh, but it's quite funny because when I picked them up all this liquid poured out of it all over my hands and I got a cut on my hands and I was saying to the woman I said I'm not going to be poisoned from this am I but she insisted that she'd cleaned it out so if you don't hear from me from this point on you know that there was poison in it um, but yeah really nice uh, no chips uh, these are often smashed and stuff so or at least one chip, and it's got a sort of nice iridescent colouring on it. So that'll do well. I'll have to check on the price on that because I'm not sure, but I'm going to guess about five, ten quid. Maybe, probably about five, something like that. Yeah, don't know. No idea. Uh, then the next thing I got, I'll just have to go and grab it. Sorry, poor planning. Was um, I got this jar here, and uh, I actually got the woman in trouble about this because um, I said, "Oh, how much do you want for this?" She goes, "Oh, it's my son's, but he's he's gone to gone for a wander." So I said, "Oh, can you keep it back for me? And if he comes back, can you find a price?" So I came back round, and as I was coming back round for a second time, I I lifted this like glass paperweight which I was going to look at but it actually got a chip in it. But as I lifted it, the wind caught this bundle of notes underneath, which I didn't know were there, and it went like, poof, in the air, like, you know, the make it rain, people grabbing money and stuffing it down the shirt style. So I was there grabbing all this money, flying around all over the place. 
really sort of everyone was looking at me and oh it was embarrassing um, and then I kind of went well how much do you want for these notes and she goes oh well, I don't know make us an offer I said how about a quid and she and she went for it and there's nothing amazing but there's three dollars of the central bank of Bahamas there is two Canadian dollars which I don't know if they're still legal tender or not, I've no idea. And there is a Scottish one pound note. So, yeah, a bit of fun for a quid. But then I asked about the badges. She said, oh, he hasn't come back yet. Bear in mind, this was like half an hour later. She goes, I don't know, give us two quid for them. So I got all these for two quid. I went back round later and he'd come back and gone away again and she goes, oh, got me in a lot of trouble with those badges. He want, he actually wanted 10 quid for them, which to be honest would have been a bit much, but for two quid, I'll take it, the tin, tin's worth two quid, the Mantique's booth, but I'll just quickly show you these badges. I don't want the video to be too long, but there's some religious ones like the National Mission of Repentance badges. There's a really cool sew-on um, patch that says Jim on it, just needs trim in there a little bit. Um, there's some old English cider badges and stuff like that. Some controversial ones, especially at the moment with uh, everything that's going on there and the finding of oil near there, which is free the Falklanders. Uh, so that's probably a good one for, for eBay. Most of the others I'll probably bundle together. Then I've been to Arctic Light Disco Night. And there's a Volvo trip people. I'm giving this one to my friend Travis. Don't offer me a cigarette, cigarette I've given up. Uh, there's some rubbish ones like TSP in the community. Um, then there's like this uh, military one which is like Mother of Pearl. Um, all sorts of other ones. And then there is some uh, predominantly sort of Adam Ant ones. There's this really sort of cool metal one. Another one there. Another cool sort of metal-y one. Uh, I think there's some others. There's Shaking Stevens. And there's a Grease one. Irish Tour. Oh, there we go. There's the other Adam Ants. Where one, I'll probably put those a bundle. And then Rush Exit Stage Left Europe 1981. And then there is Duran Duran. And status quo world tour 1981. So, a bit unusual. Um, not sure on the values of those. I might do some of them as job lot. I'll research all of them to see if they're worth selling individually. But hey ho. Sorry, this is getting a bit long. I will try and speed through this next lot a bit quicker because we've still got more to go. From the guy I picked up the iPad from, I got these two effects pedals. Uh, I've got no way of testing them, so I'm just going to sell them and say, you know, I haven't tested them. I don't know. Uh, Power Overdrive, I'm not even going to try and say that name there. This goes for about 15, 20 quid, something like that. I paid 15 for the two. This goes for about 20 quid and this one goes for about 15. And this is called the Fab Echo by Dane Electro. So the guy was pretty insistent that they worked. Uh, so uh, to be honest, I'll probably take his word for it and put, uh, you know, if there's any problems, you know, you can send them back for a full refund. Uh, then for three quid, um, oh no, this was a woman, this was a, she was a, 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 a word which would be offensive person, she, she was a dick basically, and I, I, I went through her stuff, I'll show you, I'll show you what I got first, I got, um, some SingStar microphones for the PS2. Um, I've done okay on these in the past, and I've got some SingStars to bundle in with it. I've got she, this one was with it. She wouldn't part it without. She wouldn't let me leave that. 
Um, and I've got some of the sing stars like ABBA and stuff. So I'll do like a little mini bun bundle. She wanted three quid for that. Then CD. Uh, that was a quid. And then Quidditch World Cup for the PC. And the Incredible Hulk for PS2. And then lastly, she had quite a few of these. But they're Acorn, Acorn Games. This one's Spink, Spink, Sphinx Adventure. But the others were like word processing games and stuff like that. And she wanted two quid each on those. So, that, so I said, oh, can you do any better on these? She goes, how about eight quid? And I went, well... What you quoted me that adds up to eight quid. That's not really knocking anything off. She went, oh well, you know it's early, and 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 she goes, and you've looked them all up on your phone. And to be truthful, I did look up some of the Acorn ones because I really wasn't sure, and it just really kind of offended me. I don't know why it offended me so much. I went, well, I just went, well, that's my job. I said, I I'm not going to blindly buy things and not look at how much they are. And I said, how about seven quid? And she huffed and puffed and made this massive deal out of something. She just, I think she just got up on the wrong side of the bed that day. And then I think it was a mum came over. She was sort of in her late 40s, early 50s. And then a mum who was, you know, in the 70s or whatever, came over and went, Sandra, just sell it for seven pounds. So she sold it for seven pounds. Anyway, after, yeah, anyway. And then I went back round, and this is when I spoke to the badge woman again. I felt a bit bad, so I ended up buying something else off her, and I probably shouldn't. I bought this mirror set for a quid with these brushes. There's a bit of damage to it just there. But my antiques booth, I'll get, you know, six quid for that, something like that. I've sold mirror and brush sets before in the past, but I kind of felt a bit bad. Uh, some quick stuff uh, for 50p. Just for the cake, Whoop. destroying things. Ugh. The 50p I picked up special ops on the PS1, but then on the way home I managed to crack it anyway. Uh, but I can still use the back and in the insert, but so 50p I was going to take it. And then for a quid I got the Roman Mysteries, the Beggar of something or other audio book. Uh, it's like, I think it's like eight quid on Amazon. And then, I don't know why I bought these, I picked up some HP printer cartridges, they're out of date and battered, I don't know, uh, I think they were a quid for, yeah, for, for all three, and I don't know on those, not too sure why I bought them to be honest. And then, uh, I'm hoping all the bits are there for this, but for a quid I picked up, there's loads of little bits in here. Super Mastermind, I remember this as a kid, um, I'm just hoping all the bits are there. If not, I'll probably just re-donate it or something like that. Or maybe try and part it out. Uh, and then for... I got these next. These were... Inflatable Sumo. We've got a used one and a new and sealed. I would have thought this would have been on Amazon, but it's not. Uh, so I'll probably sell it as a pair. Um, and they wanted... That way... It's not focusing. Oh, two pound fifty each anyway, and I got the two for four quid. And then I bought something which I can't show you because it's at my workshop because it needs a bit of work. I bought a six foot high uh, vintage uh, metal gym locker. So much like the ones you see on American films that have got the three little slits at the top and three little slits at the bottom. It has its original key as well and it's painted silver and it's got a number 7 stenciled on, on the front. Um, he wanted 20 quid for it but then also I looked at his stuff and he got this. And he wanted originally wanted £8 for the Game Boy with the Game Boy Light and the charger and stuff. But the little tab for the thing is broken off in there. So... Um, I said, well, how about 20 quid for the Game Boy and the locker thing? And he went for it. And those locker sort of things, I'd probably get 50 quid out of it if I sell it on Gumtree or might try eBay. Um, I've, I've sold them before and they've done well. And the Game Boy, uh, I'll see if it works. And I don't know what I'll get for that, but I couldn't pass up a Game Boy, original Game Boy. And then we're almost there. 
And then from the guy who I got the Carry Moore and Lee Cooper shoes before, I went back and got these off him. He was actually a really nice guy. He was chatting about, oh, I thought about putting them on eBay, but I was worried about all the customers scamming me. He was kind of a bit, uh, so I kind of tried to say, oh, well, if you've got some left, you can put this on. I gave him some tips and advice. I mean, he, he was probably in his mid fifties. He said he, he, you know, he, he worked from home as well. Um, so hopefully, I've encouraged somebody to sell some stuff on eBay, really, because he'd mainly got like kids. They were sort of early teens. Sort of between nine and fourteen year olds clothes, but like brand name, good quality stuff. So hopefully, if not for me to sell, I, I wouldn't be interested in that. But he could sell them for decent money. Anyway, I bought these off him. Um, I bought this pair of Berghaus. I think that's how you say it. Berghaus women's. Um, they're UK size seven, so women. I'd say they're probably women's walking boots. There's a, they do have some issues. There's some cracking there and stuff on both on both pairs. But uh, for what I paid, um, I should do alright in those. They should still sell. Um, so that was good. I got those, and I picked all these up for twelve pounds. And I put, picked a pair of these up. Is it Merrill shoes? The they need a good clean and they smell a bit sort of smoky um, so yeah still a lot of life in it and I've sold this brand before well again this is size 7 size 7 yeah so there we go uh, they need a good clean and then lastly strangely enough he got a price sticker on these and I'm not sure why he'd originally got it priced at 10 quid and then reduced it to 6 and I don't know on these, not sure. Um, I mean, I think they're legit, but I don't know how well I'm going to be able to sell them. Let's see if you can see it there. It's Prada, but they are a pair of men's smart shoes. They're definitely men's, but they are size seven and a half. So these, I don't know, I think these might be a tough sell, even as Prada. Niche market, I mean, I don't know many guys who've got size seven and a half feet. Oh, I don't know if a woman would want to purchase them, but they are very much a men's style. So any advice on that, drop me a comment. So that's it, and that was 12 quid. Um, so yeah, great day. Uh, hopefully some of that stuff should shift well. I've listed some of the bits already. I've listed um, the microphones and uh, a few of the other bits and bobs. Um, yeah, that's it. So thanks for watching. Sorry it's been a bit long. I'll do another video for you with the other stuff and I'll see you soon. Bye.